The Academy Awards will be given out Sunday night in Los Angeles. Let's talk about the state of the film industry with Charles Rifkin, chairman and CEO of the Motion Picture Association and former ambassador, U.S. ambassador to France. Ambassador, thanks for being with us. It's great to be here. It's a real honor to be on Special Report. I don't think people fully understand the impact of the, the movie industry. Uh, they understand movies are a big deal, but mm -hmm. how much money is put into the U.S. economy from this industry? 2.6 million Americans wake up every morning and go to work in jobs that are supported by our industry. And that's in all 50 states, red and blue. Uh, we sell to 130 countries around the world in surplus with every single trading relationship. When we make movies in America, $250,000 a day are pumped into the local economy every single day. And uh, these are blue collar jobs. These are not, you know, these are uh, electricians and construction workers and caterers and hairdressers. That's who we are as an industry. I saw that your, your organization put out a, uh, a statement when the USMCA went through the trade deal. That's right. That makes a big deal for, for you. Uh, we are very supportive of USMCA. It replaced NAFTA, and NAFTA was created before the digital economy existed. And our studios are all digital players right now. We're technology companies, and this deal helps define the rules for the digital economy. It protects copyright, and it has a great enforcement provision, which is wonderful for our business, too. So we couldn't be more happy. In fact, the vice president um, uh, called me and thanked for our support, and I was there at the signing ceremony for USMCA. So the China deal is also important to you as for when it comes to property rights, intellectual property. China is important. Uh, you know, right now, all we're thinking about in China, of course, are the people that are impacted by this by this uh, virus. And it's personal to me because I have an office in Hong Kong and in Singapore, and we have people on the ground in Beijing, and we're making sure that they're they're safe. But yes, China is the second largest film market uh, right now. America remains the largest film market, but China is the second largest, and they enjoy our properties. They enjoy our films. We, especially our blockbuster productions. So we're going to increase that engagement in the years to come. Do you worry about the coronavirus affecting your industry? I mean, going into a theater? I think people are worried about the health and safety of the people impacted first and foremost. Every industry will be impacted similarly, but I think the clear focus has to be on the health and safety of those involved. President Trump, he likes to talk in Hollywood terms. If I was casting a movie, I told him today, that's my football coach. I'm, there's nobody in Hollywood that can play the role better than this guy, right, coach? They're the real deal. These guys are so good looking. I said, you could be a movie star. Go to Hollywood. He often refers to Hollywood. Traditionally, Hollywood is, is pretty far left when it comes to their politics, and I'm sure we're going to see that uh, this weekend, perhaps in some speeches. We've seen it before. How does that affect things? We support a number of the administration's policies. I mentioned we supported trade. We supported the tax deal. Uh, we support many of those things. I would believe that the president probably knows more about our industry than many of his predecessors, having been on television as, as long as he has. But we work very closely with the administration. We're generating American jobs and adding to the surplus. And do you think Hollywood's starting to get it that the middle of the country is a big target as far as the type of movies they make and what kind of people are attracted to them? The movie industry is a reflection of our society, and um, we are making movies that people want to see. Uh, and that's why I think you're going to see an increasing amount of diversity in, in the movies. It's, it's, uh, it's not only the right thing to do, but it's the smart economic thing to do. The vast majority of people that go to films are, are, are women, and in fact, on a per capita basis, the, the Latinx population goes to movies more than anybody else. Uh, so you'll see more and more of that, I think, in the years ahead. The trend is in the good direction uh, for underrepresented groups, and, uh, but there's much, much more to do, and we intend to do it. You have an amazing new office with a new building for your organization yeah. with some great stuff. The Aquaman suit, uh, the Batman mask, yeah. I saw the uh, Harry Potter sorting hat. That's a cool thing. You know, it's amazing. We've been in that space since 1945. And in 1949, for example, President Truman uh, came to the space to watch Samson Delilah, directed by Cecil B. DeMille. And it's been a tradition to make these amazing screenings ever since the origins of our, of our institution. But, um, but what's fun is, when we renovated it recently, it's the first time we were able to put in these iconic props and these amazing costumes. It is the place where Hollywood meets Washington. So it seems only fitting that we'd have these wonderful representations from Hollywood in Washington. All right, here it is. Joker, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, The Irishman, Little Women, Parasite, Jojo Rabbit, Marriage Story, Ford versus Ferrari, Best Picture. Which way did you vote? 
Well, I'm proud to say, by the way, that six of those films are filmed in the United States. Um, I can't choose between parents. Every one of those studios that I represent has, has somebody up for uh, an award. But I will say that this is a celebration of creativity. It's a celebration of a global industry that was born in the United States of America. And it's going to be an amazing night on Sunday. Mr. Ambassador, we appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.